group stage. This is reminiscent of that Liam Ward lineup that they had in game one. So now going into the knockouts, we'll see what kind of lessons Blacklist have learned and how they're going to be able to deploy. All right, everybody, coming into game number two. Blacklist holding the lead 1 0 right now. Can Fireflux upset Destiny? It's going to be Fireflux on the blue side this time, up against Blacklist International, now on the red. I want to see how the tempo is going to be broken, right? Because I think that's going to be by far the most important part of this entire strategy. Because once we see Fireflux online playing as five, it's a problem. And uh, Renna J, don't tell me he's going to get first blood again. <laughs> nope, get he's fine. Blood again. <laughs> he's still holding on to the, uh, the Purify. And by holding on to the Purify, it just shows that he's going to be playing with his mechanics. He's going to be playing with instinct. Because between the CC on Apex, between the CC on Sunshine when he procs his skills, nothing can stop him. So he can just, just as quickly run into a bush and he's okay. You're sounding more and more super shark pilled here. The man's going with the spring. He wants to be fast. He wants to be oh. quick. Oh, no. Don't no, 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 Nice knock up. And immobilized. A lot of damage on a Renny J there. Renny what, J. What we say? Ka-chow! Ka-chow! <laughs> I will say this, Apex 47 is going to be walking in the park with Renny J, I feel like, this whole game. They're just holding hands, he's going to try to keep him next to him, keep eyes on him. Wait a second, a little bit of damage on a Sensui here. TNZ, going to try to unload Rosa there as well. Sensui goes down first, blood. All right, that one, not so Ka-chow. Because again, you're not going to get any uh, defensive or regenerative uh, properties when you go into a bush. So. Fireflux knows that. Fireflux leaned hard on Shinsui, and this is not a good position. I have to be honest, Blacks International are in trouble. If Renegade dies early, that's fine. But if it's Shinsui, oh no, he's going to have a hard time even this first turtle. Yeah, and this is just a punish because we did see Shinsui use his Retribution early. Relayed to TNZ. And now, I mean, Ooh. No, he, he should be fine, right? He doesn't have a sprint, but oh, wait a minute. He Might is kind of low, though. Oh! That's, is that two? Two for TNZ? Yes, two for TNZ. Uh, Ren and Jay timed out his passive. You see how it took a while for his bush uh, to actually give him the shield in the HP region? Uh, and there you go. That, that might have been something that they could have better coordinated, but something tells me it's for the macro play. He actually delayed TNZ. This might actually be a 50-50 turtle. Oh, we'll see how 50-50 how it really is going to be, right? Because at the end of the day, one of the few things I'm concerned is when I see a Leomord with kills, with money, in a matter of fact, the faster he scales, the more you don't want to be below 50% HP. That's the, uh, that's the Oath Keeper for you. Look at Running J here, trying to find a way into the back, maybe try to lock onto Rosa during this uh, fight. Tianzi as well. Here comes the Steed, though. Tianzi can unload a little bit of damage, but Alien! Able to lock him up. TNZ takes a, takes a turtle. That should be all they need, but they want to go for more. Taking down Edward. Oh, no. Sensui brings out the appraisal wrath and pulled back in. Grab, grab, slam, slam, and taken out. Sensui going to be off. It's a two for zero plus a turtle in favor of Fireflux. Okay, something tells me even Sensui was thinking twice about that. As uh -huh. soon as he died at level three, at level three, folks, even before the turtle spawned, Apex in trouble. All right. He should have gone into ADP mode, anti-disaster protocol. But <laughs> he was playing with fate. He was saying, you know what, maybe we can go 50-50. And look what happened. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you got to give it to Alien. That was a great set by him to allow Apex to get in there with a clean implosion once you get the slam slam down. But let's look at the hero counters so far, Ooh. because this is a matchup that, you know, we're seeing more recently other than just the Faramis. And theoretical win rate, 53% in favor of Lily in comparison to the 46% leading into Valentina. Ooh, Apex 47 does get the stun and the knockup on to two, but Apex 47 is going to pay for it. Sensui picking up the kill, but TNZ finds Renny J, finds Rosa. It's two for one right now, but TNZ wants to stop that. Picks up a double kill. He's 4-0-1 right now. Not where you want to see a Leo more. TNZ's eating good, and that is an understatement. This is exactly where you want to be as a Leo more early on. You see, he built his Hunter Strike, and he is number one gold earner in the game. Under five minutes only. Oheb coming in at second. Now, with that said, how good is this glue? I have to, I have to say, good. the glue just draws people and puts them where exactly Apex wants them, especially for Rosa and TNT to clean up. You're not even seeing sunshine yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And all this because, hey, you didn't pick up Farmers? That, that's fine with me. I can get away with this. It's one of the few picks that you need to be worried about is the dive is going to occur on top side. Oh, look at Rosa. 
Ohem tries to get a wave, but flickers right into the ends. He and Apex 47 there. Gonna go down another kill into the hands of Fire Flux. Man, KL1 got isolated so bad. Uh, th there's nothing that Renegade can do anyways. He was just gonna check in on him where he was. And now they're in trouble. Ooh. Renny J. Oh. Gonna get knocked up. I don't think there's an escape here. Doesn't have the sprint. Wait. Taking a little bit too much damage. Yenzi finds it. They give up Turtle there. But I think it's a very good trade for Fire Flux. Yeah, I mean, uh, two more. Two more seconds is all uh, Renny J needed to buy time for so that the rest of the team can actually get in on the action. Well, speaking of action, Alien is able to kind of rotate from that top side. It's a bit difficult, right, in the Charisma matchup. Now, real questions here. I'm curious on your opinions of this. This goes for Utrex and even for Leo. Who do you prefer eating good, TNZ or Rosa? Leo? I would like for TNZ to eat good. Because Rosa is okay. We've seen Rosa play this Lilia like a janitor, mm. like doing the dirty work, right? Making sure that vision is good, spacing is good, zoning is good. So Rosa needs very little items for Ten. Leo Mord. Leo Mord is out of the meta, so you need as much items on him. I'd say this is worse for Blacklist. And Tianzi's eating so good right now that Rosa's perfectly okay with the scraps that are dropped down. There's food for everybody in Fireflux right now. Yeah, I mean, it's evident with the 2.4k lead that they've developed for themselves. Eight to two is the current kill score and Renna J willing to run underneath the tower to get the heck out of there. Now, Oheb, the oppression is starting to be applied onto him because I think Fireflux have recognized that, okay, if the only, it's now that we've kind of dominated the early game, let's stop their late game scaling. I love how Oheb, oh, you're gonna switch lanes? Okay, we'll just send four people down that way then. Now, Blacklist is onto it though. Alien able to get stun on you way there. Alien should be okay here, but Renny J might not be okay. Tansy put some nice damage down. All it takes whoa, is one more whoa, hit, whoa. but he wants to catch his steed. He's gonna re-engage onto the blue side, I mean, onto the purple buff side, though. Whoa. Alien taking a little bit too much damage. Oheb able to finally put a kill to the map. Oh. The barrage comes out, and Sensu is taken out. A godlike kill for Tianzi. Blacklist still against the wall. You could have sworn Tianzi's sword was about 10 feet long. The way he was just poking out, almost taking down Edward, almost killing Oheb. If not only those members of Blacklist committed their flicker, that could have been disastrous. It already is. Rosa under the tower still dealing with Yue, getting revenge from game one. Sunshine and Renny J as well. And still, we have that was our first time seeing Sunshine so far. And so far, so good, right? I mean, everything is working in favor of Fireflux's esports. This draft is so nasty. All the holes seem to be covered here. Again, it shades to what happened just a few nights ago in the group stage, wherein they took down Blacks International, set the tempo, went for the sweep, and became number one in the seeds in their group. Now, something to note, look at Renegade. His main thing right now, since they're not ahead, is just to clear bushes and make sure that they know exactly where the members of Fireflux are so Blacklist can continue trying to claw back into a favorable position. There's very little that Renegade can do to protect Oheb, very little he can do to actually set up team fights, and that might be problematic. How far how far can they push it really, right? I mean I mean like all elastic bands, there's a tension where eventually it's going to snap and what is that breaking point that we're seeing for either side? Like I, I think for Blacklist International, a 2.8k lead, as long as it stays there, sure, it, it kinda sucks, but at the end of the day, we'll get to where we need to be. In comparison to Fireflux, who is just like, I wanna break you. I need to snap you soon and fast. I don't know, but Fireflux does have some late game potential with Rosa, with Sunshine, with Alien. We've already seen him do some crazy things. TNZ is, yes, the bully in the beginning, but he's got some backup for the late game still. That's the thing. TNZ is only doing what he's doing because the cores from Fireflux are actually serving it up. Rosa's dealing a lot of damage. Again, seven assists already. Almost 95% KP. Oh. Edward kind of misses there. Apex going to get pulled in, but he's okay. Blacklist, though, might want to try to capitalize on this. Decide not to, back off, play a save. We got 30 seconds to the Lord, and as long as we can gain some control in the map, it's okay. All right, back to what I was saying, right? Tianzi's only doing this because Fireflux are in sync. Fireflux are forcing fights. If Blacklist is able to deny these fights, then it's going to slow down to a crawl. It's going to go down to 1,000 ahead, 500 ahead, and then eventually it's going to be okay because Oheb right now is actually ahead from Sunshine. So there, it's not like the carry's not getting farm. Look at that damage though. Oh, he still wants to pull him, but no backup oh. there. Now comes the full barrage. The backup is there. I'm wrong. And Yue's taken out. 
Tianzi now picks up the steed, picks up his ride. He's gonna try to ram down on a Renny J here. Renny J on the run Whoa. in his jungle. Is Tianzi gonna Whoa. be able to catch him? A little bit of back and forth, but it's not enough. Tianzi with a legendary kill. Dude, I don't know about this one. It's starting to look really bad. Like, Alien should be okay here, but it's starting to look real bad for Blacklist International, right? Not in the sense that they are, you know, trying to recover from the damage being applied to them, but at what point, the way that their tempo break isn't very profitable. Yep, you're talking about the, the rubber band and the snap happening. If anything, it's on Blacklist. Once Renegade's antics are solved, then he's just but a nuisance. He's just a little tick on the back of Fireflux's giant saber tooth. And they are indeed the predators here. Blacklist their prey. All right, Tianzi able to take the Lord. They do get the stun on the Sensui as well. Sensui try to contest for, but now he has to try to escape the full barrage. Comes Whoa. out. Oh, Heb taking way too much damage. They know they got a hit and run right there. Fireflux taking control. You see that alien took a good five seconds worth of carries uh, basic attacks. Just, mm -hmm. You just don't do that. Mm -hmm. Glue, glue is built diff now. Mm. Ah, it's just, it's just so annoying to deal with the split split specifically, right? It guarantees you time, and uh, that's something that unfortunately Blacklist International don't have. Look at Rosa, just a bully right now. Does fall back in. Hold on, has to pop the fear. Fight goes down. Renny J finally able to pick up a hit for himself. But now, he's gonna get taken out himself, Alien. Able to get the implosion. I mean, Apex able to get the implosion. Oh, Hep finds Alien, though. It's two for one, Blacklist finally coming out on top in a fight, but the Lord is still coming. Just the first economic win for Blacklist in this whole game so far, <laughs> I'd say. They, they've been trading downwards all the way, and it's not like it came for free, right? It, in the moment, it did, but they lost out bad. Bottom lane, top lane, they need to make more of the map back, and they can only do that via Renegade. So Renegade isn't out of the picture just yet. Mm -hmm. He's not calling it quits just yet. So far, when I'm looking at the items, right, man, if Tian once Tianzi gets that Blade of Despair, it is it is going to be really, really rough for them because so far, Rosa, at this point, every item is just an extra surplus because so he's been he's been bullying them. He's been slowing them down with his Ice Queen's Wand. He's got the damage to do so with the new changes to the Lightning Trungeon. Even more difficult to actually keep up with his pace, the movement, the footwork from Rosa. And that's why Lily is such a meta hero right now. Look at Blacks International's lineup. They all need to be of a certain proximity. They need to be at least mid or close range to deal the damage. How do you do that without walking into glooms? How do you do that without walking into shadow energies? Look at what Lily is doing right now. Rosa is a menace. Rosa the menace, AKA Thorn Queen, AKA Bully. Rosa's gonna keep him at bay here. Fireflux at this point, I mean, they feel good about it. They can just hang out. They can kind of stall lanes a little bit. They don't have to force anymore, I feel. I, I feel, I agree with you with that, on track because I think that at this point of time, the question is, how do you break the camel's back, right? You're not looking to maim it no longer, you're really looking to break it. The only way is if you're going to have a full team fight and you're looking for the damage alongside of three, ideally five kills, oh, oh, oh. but three to four is doable. Apex looking for somebody here. Steed comes out. Edward is there though, watch out for the penalty zone. TNZ and Apex 47 don't care about it. They're gonna hang out, they're gonna go for it. Chase down Renny J, but here comes Yue, Sensui, and Oheb. They're ready to fight. Fireflux decides to disengage. Okay, all right. Failed engages like that are small wins for Blacklist. They should count their blessings. The fact that Fireflux committed a uh, Phantom Steed to actually force out response from Blacklist, and what they got from Blacklist was just a sprint, means Fireflux are setting up this Lord. Fireflux are making sure that if they won that fight up top in the long lane, this would have been over by the time they got this second Lord. Now, Blacks International, they know that Fireflux are still looking to pick up the pace. It's very far from 50-50. The 5k gold deal would say otherwise. 14 minutes in, I'm wondering what Yue is looking at. Because Yue, between him and Oheb, I think Yue is the more reliable source of damage. Mm. I think Yue, he's looking to drag this game out. The only way to do that is if they secure this upcoming Lord. So I think he's trying to get on top of TNT personally, or at least apply the Terrify so that Sensui can go in for a clean steal. Here's the thing, Yue has that implosion, right? But the way the Fireflux is positioning himself, they don't, I feel like he doesn't have as many openings as Apex 47 does. Apex 47 does still have it. I'm waiting for him to blow it out. 
Alien gonna get taunted up from Sensui, but a lot of damage on Edward. Edward tries to pop the penalty zone, but it's not enough. The full barrage comes out, and he's unloading onto Sensui. Renny J gonna oh. be next. It's four man wipeout, a killing spree for Sunshine, and Fire Flux aren't even go gonna go for the Lord. They're gonna run it down the mid lane. Yeah, the call is endable. It's just Oheb left to defend. And looking at the minimap a little longer than I should have. They were setting up for the cleanup with Oheb, it just didn't oh, happen. Oh, Oheb, speaking of cleanup, might just get cleaned up. They would flick her away, though, over to safety, but the minions are still coming. Can he 1v5? I don't think it's, too, I think it's a little too much to ask right now. Fireflux Esports take game two. GG, they even up the score one to one in this best of five.